Hello and welcome to Summit Life. My name is Abidemi Wato. Uh, my name is Prince Win Wato. We're alive. We are live <laughs> on Faith World TV. Yes, okay. We, and uh, we're interactive as well. Okay. We are live yes. on Faith mm -hmm. World TV. Yes. We yes. are here because we believe the Lord wants to bless you. Yes, absolutely. And that's why we are here. And absolutely. we are here to deliver that which the Lord has laid on our hearts. Yes. So that the, the body of Christ will be mm -hmm. blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Glory to God. So before we get going, let's just have a quick word of prayer and then we'll uh, commit the whole thing to the Lord's hands. So Father, we thank you for another opportunity to be able to minister to your people as your voice, as your hands, as you know, your representative. Lord, we just ask you that God, you will use this opportunity to minister to people, to change their lives, to change their circumstances, Father God, to minister your word to speak a word in season to each and every person that hears. Mm. Thank you, Lord, for transformation that will take place as a result of this program today. We give you praise, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Right, so I hope you had a great Christmas. During the last um, episode, we were talking about, you know, how to take advantage of the Christmas time, how to uh, share the good news and, and you know, um, of Jesus Christ, both in words and in, and in kind as well. I hope you all got around to doing that, okay? So today we're going to um, talk about miracles and angelic activity. I mean, it's all around the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ that we just uh, celebrated, you know, a few days ago. Mm -hmm. um, what it is, is if you look at the fact that God became man is the greatest miracle. In fact, it's still throwing off a whole chunk of religious people of our day because they just can't comprehend the fact that God can become man. But the uh, yeah, the Lord, the Lord is God, and He can do anything that He wants to do. Absolutely. So He can He can He can decide to do whatever He wants to do because He is the, He is the Creator. Mm -hmm. He is the Alpha and Omega. Mm -hmm. There is none that can compete with Him at all. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. He He decided that His Son is going to come into this world through a woman. Mm -hmm. Through a virgin. Hallelujah. Amen. So today we're going to be looking at you know the not just the miracle of the main miracle of uh, God becoming man, but also we're going to look at different miracles surrounding it. And what's the purpose? The, the aim really is to highlight certain things that can put us in a position to be able to receive miracles. Because I honestly believe that this is a season of miracles. And when, when the time for anything is right, when you flow with that anointing that's happening, then it's easy for you to receive whatever it is that's in the atmosphere at the time. Yeah, and I believe that everyone wants to receive something because God has a gift, just as we give gifts mm -hmm. to our brothers and sisters, to those who are for the family members. God has a gift that he wants to give to every one of us. Mm -hmm. And then we need to be in a state, you know, within the, the, a state where we can receive that gift that Absolutely. he has for us. Absolutely. Absolutely. So... To start with, you know, I said the topic is um, miracles and angelic activity. So where you see miracles happen, angels must be must have been involved. So what's a miracle? You know, in a nutshell, a miracle is a supernatural intervention is a natural in the natural order of things. Okay, God created you know natural laws that govern the natural world. You know, we see the law of gravity. We see, you know, sowing and reaping. If you don't plant a seed, you won't have an, a harvest. Oh so all God. these, yeah, so yeah. all these uh, natural laws, God put them in place so that things can run smoothly. And he rarely, you know, wants to change them unless it's absolutely necessary. But having said that, when the need arises, God gets involved and changes the order of things, okay? That's where we have a miracle. So we see that, you know, um, he, 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 he does not necessarily disrupt it unless he has something to do with his program, unless yeah. he has something to do with his children. Yes. Yeah? Yes. So God, God does that, you know, when it is necessary. But he doesn't want us to live like that all of our days. Mm. Rather, he wants us to live under the blessing. Blessings, mm -hmm. which it means empower to be to prosper yeah that is it that's what god wants us to do mm -hmm. so we we wait upon him in everything that he wants to do and and, and we just respond to his his word and his whatever 
he has to, mm -hmm. to say. Mm -hmm. you know. Actually, the fact that we're children of God puts us in the blessing zone, mm -hmm. which means that God's power is upon our lives so that everything keeps working mm -hmm. normally, accelerated, unless something clogs the wheel, basically. Yeah. Okay, so that's when, you know, we need a miracle. And that's the way he has ordained it, mm -hmm. that we plug into the covenant and live in the blessing and only occasionally when we need a miracle, God will give us one. Amen. Okay. And the reason, the reason we actually need a miracle is because of the, uh, the fall. Okay. Because yeah. of the fallen world, things are not the way God created it to be. If you look in the beginning, Genesis, when God created everything, he said it was good. So everything was good. Everything was working perfectly. But uh, in Genesis chapter 3, Adam and Eve disobeyed God and everything collapsed. The system Started function malfunctioning, and that is why sometimes you need God to intervene to be able to make sure things work, you know, uh, properly. Uh, yeah, no mm. matter what happened, mm. God, God can never be surprised in a way. What I mean by surprise, God can never be shocked by what did, what Adam did because he was ready to put his word forward mm -hmm. because about fellowship we talk about fellowship mm -hmm. god wants to fellowship with us mm -hmm. and one of the, one of those greatest things that god was doing in those days was coming out to meeting them in the garden mm -hmm. and then when he met them in the garden it's just to down of the evening come down and and just to greet them and say things but then when the when, when the fall came you know Everything stopped but god really want to bring things to the way he wanted things to be mm -hmm. Also, you know, in terms of receiving a miracle, it is not, there's nothing mystical about it. Mm. Because the fact that it's a supernatural intervention in natural order of things does not make it mystical. Mm. You know, when we, when we are people of covenant and we look into the scriptures, there are things that we can see. There are ways that we can uh, uh, present ourselves, position ourselves to receive a miracle if we need one. Mm. And so one of the things that we're going to do during this uh, episode here is to look at how we can position ourselves to receive miracles. Mm. So, um, like I said before at the beginning, angels are always involved in miracles. Amen. And now I want to have a quick look at, you know, angels. Who are they? Are they just those little doll-like things that you see all over the place with a halo on their heads? No. Angels are powerful spirit beings that were created by God. They are messengers. God sends you. You know they 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 they, they carry out God's uh, assignments, and there are different classes, different types. You know, different hierarchy of angels. For instance, you have the seraphim, you have the yeah. uh, cherubim, then you have the hosts of heaven. But also, in terms of hierarchy, you have the archangel angels. Mm. Yeah? yeah, you have the example of the, Gabriel, Gabriel, who we're going to see a lot of. Michael. Uh, his involvement in this whole miracle story because he's the one in charge of information. And then you have Michael. Michael. Yeah. He's the one that's in charge of warfare, you know, and things like that. So even their name, angel, is from, uh, uh, is a translation of a Greek word, which means angelos, which means a messenger. So we see that that's what God uh, created them to be. Which is, they are supernatural beings created... Um, to, to minister to the heirs of salvation. So angels are created to minister to you, to minister to me, you know, in, in, in when we run into issues that God wants them to be there, they will be there and they will carry the word of God as they were commanded, not their own, not their own work, as they are commanded, so that they will deliver it in the same way. And that's, that's, that's as Christians today, as we read our Bible and do things like that, mm -hmm. we find out that we have to carry the word of God mm -hmm. as it is in the Bible, exactly the way it is in the Bible. Mm -hmm. It's that way we are pleasing God. Mm -hmm. If we want to please God, we have to do the things that uh, he said in the book because mm -hmm. that is the word of God. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. So we find out that in the scriptures, angels, the Bible says that they are innumerable, uncountable. Mm -hmm. you know. But then we saw that during the uh, rebellion, when Satan rebelled in the scriptures, you know, we find that a third of them rebelled with him. So those are referred to as fallen angels. You know, they 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 are not in, in they are not loyal to God anymore. Mm -hmm. But the good news is that two thirds of them are still loyal to God. And like um, 
uh, like you said, in, according to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14, okay. they are ministering uh, spirits sent to minister for us. That's their, one of their main responsibilities now, to minister to us who are heirs of uh, uh, salvation, mm -hmm. we who are uh, in covenant with God. We are the ones that they are, they, one of their main responsibilities is to minister for us and to minister to us. Mm -hmm. For instance, in, in terms of uh, protection, mm -hmm. we see in Psalm 91, how that, you know, the Bible says that, you know, the angels, they will bear us up in their hands so that yeah. we will not knock our food. Yeah. You know, also the Bible talks about how he has given his angels charge over us. These are the things that we need to be uh, familiar with. We need to establish ourselves in mm. how that the angels are involved in every area of our, um, of our existence, really, as heirs of salvation. Even in our normal lives, they are always there to guide us. Yeah. They are always there to guide us, to watch over us. I mean, they are they are just created for us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes these are the things that sometimes we just don't know. But it's good for us to know about it so that we know that our our Father, the Almighty God, is always watching over us. Mm -hmm. Every step we take, and when we leave the house, when we come back to the house, when, when, when we lie down, when we sleep, you know, so that we should also be watching what comes out of our mouth. Because it's always there mm -hmm. to listen mm -hmm. to us. And our angels yeah. are always there mm -hmm. to, to watch and listen to us. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we see that, you know, that uh, the, the angels are always involved in so many different situations. Whether we are aware of it or not, they are involved in looking after us and taking care of us because mm. we're heirs of salvation. So what we're going to do uh, in terms of linking um, miracles with angelic activity, you know, is that we're going to look at, you know, two different stories. I mean, today we'll start looking at, you know, the story of uh, John the Baptist, mm. you know, John the Baptist was uh, the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ, right? He was the one that showed him up, was the one that baptized him, that sh showed him that he was the Lamb of God. And he's also, it was also a cousin of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so it's really a powerful story. Mm. But we see that angelic activity began because John himself was a miracle baby. All right, yeah. so uh, we see that angelic activity began even around his birth. You know, because he was the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior that God had been talking about mm. for 4,000 years that he was going to come. Mm. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, uh, Luke chapter 1. And we're going to look at uh, verses 5 to uh, 25. Okay. So we'll, we'll just read a verse or a couple of verses and then present to us what we see there yeah. as uh, a, a criterion to present ourselves to receive miracles yeah. from God, mm. you know, because you see, people have different needs. Right now, your miracle, your need might be to be, you know, a, a miracle of uh, um, of healing. You know, maybe you've been given a terminal uh, diagnosis, a condition that the doctors cannot help you. Mm. But we know that with God, all things are possible because mm. He's the God of all flesh. Yeah with whom nothing is impossible. Yeah. So that might be your miracle. Yours might be maybe a financial... Yeah. Maybe financial mm -hmm. miracle. Mm -hmm. You are looking for that job that you have always wanted to have. And you that, know, months that is, and years. And, not years had it. and there is nothing that is too small. Mm -hmm. As long as it, you, you desire, so God wants us to desire it, and, we, and he will provide it, provide it for us mm -hmm. according to his will. You know, because everything that is outside the will of God is not for, for us. Mm -hmm. Everything that is within the will of God is for us. Yeah. And whatever God gives to you mm -hmm. has, has uh, his presentation or as what, in answer to your prayer, mm -hmm. that is what you will need. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know? Okay, so let's make a start. So we're looking at the story of Elizabeth and Zachariah. And of mm -hmm. course, uh, John comes, comes along yeah. sometime in, 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 um, later on in the story. So I'm going to read verses 5 to 25, but I'll read them, like I said, uh, uh, one verse or two verses at a time to mm. bring out a criterion that we can see there. So let me read verse 5. Mm. It says, In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife, Elizabeth, was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous. No, no, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to jump into verse 6. Okay, so uh, it just stopped there that his wife, Elizabeth, was also a descendant of Aaron. Okay, mm -hmm. so re just reading that verse, you know, there are two things that stand out there, right? First of all, they were covenant people. 
right? That is, they, 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 they had a covenant with God Almighty, mm. all right? The Old Testament, the Old Covenant, they were part of it, yeah. okay? They were part of that covenant. And you see, under that covenant, there are promises that are guaranteed. And this is where it is so important for us. Mm. Where, as we go along, we're going to, you know, actually try and uh, uh, adapt it to ourselves so that we can yeah. see ourselves right. in this yeah. picture. Mm. All right. So yeah. we see that uh, Elizabeth and Zacharias, they were covenant people. They were people of God. Mm. They were Jewish people. And, you know, one of the promises that God gave them, you know, is the fact that in Exodus chapter 23 and verse 26, mm. it says that he will bless their food and their water and no one will be barren or miscarry in their land. Yeah. <clears throat> so this is very important. That is a covenant promise, yeah. which means that God swore to them yeah. that that would be the case. Yeah. So, it, yeah, know, go on. If you look at the issue, if, when you talk about this covenant, if you look at the issue of uh, David and Goliath too, you, you, you find out that uh, when David came to the scene, because he recognizes that he is a covenant person, and he recognizes that Goliath is not a covenant person, David was able to overcome by that. Praise the Lord. Amen. So it's actually important. But, you know, for us, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 6, that our covenant is even a better covenant, which is mm. the new covenant in yeah. Christ Jesus. Yeah. It's a better covenant than the old covenant. And also the fact that once we're in Christ Jesus, we have access to all the promises of the Old Testament, yeah. both the old and the new. Mm. So if you're out there and, you know, your, your miracle that you need is that of fruitfulness. Maybe you've, not, you've been married and then for years and you've not had a child. It is part of your covenant right. Mm. God swore that none will be barren in our land. So all you need to do is to make sure you position yourself, know this, get this into yourself. See yourself in it, that you are a covenant person, and that promise applies to you. So the second thing that we notice there concerning uh, these two in verse 5 is the fact that they were priests. priests. Mm -hmm. They were priests, and which means, which means that for them to appear there, because it was Zachariah's time to appear there, he has to be a priest right down there. Because of the covenant, a priest who's preached the word of God, he spoke things about God, God, used, God uses him through his spirit to, to, to bless the people mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. time. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we see there that because they were priests, both of them, they were from the lineage of Aaron, the mm -hmm. high priest, mm -hmm. that means that they had a closer walk with God compared to the other people. Mm -hmm. Now, how does that affect us? The Bible tells us that in 1 Peter 2 verse 9, that we are a royal yeah, priesthood. priesthood. As a child of God, the Bible says that you are a royal priesthood. You are a priest with kingly authority as well. Mm. All right. So we are closer to him in our in, to, to God in our work than even the average person. Mm. Okay. So these they had this going for them. Then in verse six, it goes on to say, both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. How is this important? In Deuteronomy chapter 1, sorry, chapter 28, verses 1 to 14, the, the prerequisite for them to uh, experience and enjoy all the blessings, the benefits of, mm. of that covenant is obedience. obedience. God said if they, if they hack in and obey all his commands. And the Bible says that these two were like that. They were in that position. Yeah. Okay. So they were living right. They were, they, you know, they, they were covenant people. They were priests. And they knew their, 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 their right. Okay, they lived right, and then it was their portion to be able to experience all the blessings. Yeah, the Bible and, talks about sorry, yeah, and, the, and this actually the put there. So, yeah. Because the Bible talks about in that Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight that one of the blessings is that they, they will they will the blessing of God will be on the fruit of their womb. Yeah. Okay, so that's one of the uh, blessing, and because they were living right. It was accessible to them. It's just like they, they positioned themselves. They put themselves in a position where they were ready to receive from God and they were doing the will of God, mm -hmm. which made them righteous, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and placed them in a position to receive. Yeah. Okay. In verse 7, it, it goes on to say, but they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive and they were both very old. 
So that tells me that they had a need Amen. for a miracle. Amen. They had a yes. need for a miracle. Yes. Elizabeth was barren. She could not conceive even when she was young. Then this whole thing was complicated by the fact that they were all, both very old. So it was a situation of, if God doesn't do it, there was nothing anyone could do. do. Naturally speaking, there was no hope for them. So they needed a miracle. Okay. So then let's read verses um, 8, and 8 to 10. It says, Once when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest, before God, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, hmm. to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. Hmm. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshippers were praying outside. Now, this is very, very important. In the sense that both Elizabeth and Zacharias were actively involved in prayer and in worship. The hmm. burning of incense signifies Worship. Worship. Mm -hmm. They were actively, and in, yeah, mm. and praise. Mm. They were actively involved in praying and in worship. But not only that, they kept the company of praying people. The Bible says that at that particular time, all the mm. multitude there, they were praying. They were praying out in the outer court. Mm -hmm. So the atmosphere was that of prayer. Yeah. Now, if you need a miracle from God, <clears throat> you've got to ask. It is a spiritual principle. You don't ask. You don't get, that's what it says in James, that you don't mm. have because you don't ask. And Jesus said in Matthew 7, 7, ask that you might receive, yeah. that, you know, seek, you will find, knock, and the door will be opened unto you. So we must ask. So Zacharias and Elizabeth were actively engaged in asking by themselves. They kept company of those who are, were praying. So there was an atmosphere of prayer mm. that presented itself to God to be able to move yeah. supernaturally in that situation. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, so verse 11. It says, Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. Mm. There we have the angelic activity beginning. Okay? Like I said before at the, at the onset, where you have miracles, you have angels involved. And mm. we're just going through this. So they had prepared the place. Yeah. There was an atmosphere of prayer. prayer. And then... The angels showed up. And they were covenant people. They mm -hmm. were righteous. Mm -hmm. They were asking. Mm -hmm. they were, they, there was a need. Mm -hmm. And God looked at them and said, when, some, when, you, when you begin to do the work of God and you forget about everything about yourself, mm -hmm. God steps in. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we spend a lot of time mm -hmm. trying to uh, pray for the issue that we have and everything. And God is talking about the things concerning God is about people. God, God, concerned, God is more concerned about people. And so when we begin to do the will of God towards people, helping people, working with people, um, sometimes just going to bless the old people, God looks at that mm -hmm. and he can direct our miracles mm -hmm. in a way that will surprise us. Hallelujah. Amen. So that means that, yes, they were supposed to ask, but at the same time, they found out that in their asking mm. God for the miracle, yeah. it wasn't as if that was all that their lives was about. Mm -hmm. You know, they were engaged actively in serving God, in playing their part in, in serving God as well. Then verses 12 to 17, it says, When Zacharias saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. Mm. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zachariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. Mm. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord, their God. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedience, the wisdom of the righteous mm. to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Wow. What a message. Yeah. What a message. So the angel Gabriel, like we said, is the, is the one in charge of information. So he brought this 
It's like, it's like, not only was he bringing the answer to say, look, your prayer has been answered. You're yeah. going to have a son. But he also went on to talk about details, details about, about everything how they would take happen. care of the child. Yes. Even the child's destiny, what he was supposed to do and so on and so forth. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, we see how important it is for us to, you know, uh, uh, be in an atmosphere of pray, uh, worship and prayer to make room for uh, angelic uh, uh, interventions in our lives. I think I believe, I also believe that um, Zachariah wasn't actually expecting it. No, not at that time. Not at that time. Wasn't actually expecting it mm -hmm. when the angel, when the angel came. Mm -hmm. Because it was a bit delayed. He was supposed to go out at a particular time. It was a bit delayed. And people outside were a bit worried. But not knowing that he was having, the atmosphere had been created. Don't, don't forget that the atmosphere has been created already for a miracle. <laughs> when we begin to give ourselves to the work of the Lord, remember he was in the temple. You know, was was his own time upon the incident, but there are people also there praying. That means the whole atmosphere has been charged, mm -hmm. and the angels was ready to say, "This is the time. Mm -hmm. This is the time for us mm -hmm. to deliver to, to for him to deliver the message from God mm -hmm. for Zachariah." Mm -hmm. You know, God takes us by surprise sometimes. That's why we need to praise Him. <laughs> He's never too late for anything. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever you have in mind, He's always there because you are righteous. And you have been doing his will. And he wants to make sure that, that you are happy too. Mm -hmm. As you begin to make others happy, mm -hmm. he wants to make you happy too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there's one thing that I wanted to highlight though. Mm -hmm. That the fact that the Bible says that, you know, Zechariah was very fearful. Mm -hmm. He was gripped with fear. Mm -hmm. And the angel had to tell him that, look, don't be afraid. I have good news for you. Yeah. Now, that, that is a bit of a border for me. Because, okay, yes, because the angels... You know, they carry the glory of God because they, are, they come from the presence of God. So, yeah. And when you've been in the presence of God, you know, you carry, his, his glory rubs off on you. Mm. Okay, so they, they, they are so majestic sometimes when they appear to people. That's why people, you know, are tempted to worship them, mm. you know. And the Bible says that we should not worship angels, you know. They even re reject the worship of, you know, humans mm. to worship them. But you see, the important thing is that we find out that fear comes with Two other people, two other triplets. They are like triplets. They, they work together. Mm. So you got fear, you got doubt, and you got unbelief. So the first thing that manifested here with Zacharias was fear. You know, he was so fearful. But then, right after that, we see unbelief manifesting. Yeah. And you see, the reason I po we're pointing this out is the fact that we need to be aware that these three will rob you of your miracle. Yeah. They will cause you to abort the miracle even when the thing gets started. If you're giving room to fear, if you're giving room to mm -hmm. uh, uh, unbelief, if you're giving room to doubt, the enemy will ag gain access through all these things and mm -hmm. bring about, you know, um, you know, to abort that abort miracle, miracle yeah. that's already in, in motion. Yeah. And that's exactly the reaction. In fact, sometimes when we look at um, the next verse that we're going to read, about when the angel actually pronounced judgment on him yeah. because of his unbelief. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's in uh, verse 18. In verse 18, it says, Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? Here he was in the presence of angel Gabriel, yeah. an archangel, mm -hmm. full of glory. Mm -hmm. And he's still asking, how can I be sure of this? And the guy has already told you that your prayer has been answered. Your wife is going to bring bring a child. Giving what a, else do you need? He's giving a detail concerning, details. concerning everything. Yeah. You know, that only like, shows the unbelief that was inside of him coming out. Mm. And we see that the angel picked that up. And because God did not want you know, his program to be aborted or to be interfered with mm. by his unbelief, yeah. he, was, he was struck with dumbness. So he was dumb until the, the child was born. You know why that is? <laughs> because... The Bible says that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. speaks. So because unbelief was so much on the inside of him, he kept speaking. If he keeps keep speaking the unbelief, you never can tell. The yeah. child may be aborted along the way and God could not take that risk. Yeah. So the angel actually made him dumb because yeah. of that. Yeah. And you know that unbelief, if you, if you look at the time of our Lord Jesus Christ on earth, <laughs> you know, always he said, because of your unbelief. You have not refused it because of your unbelief. Mm -hmm. And unbelief is a very dangerous thing. Mm -hmm. Unbelief, uh, doubt, and uh, fear. fear. Mm -hmm. They are three triplets that always move together. 
their aim is to destroy the plans of God for the children of God. Mm -hmm. Because it's a matter of just beginning to put, at first you might receive it, matter of just beginning to, uh, beginning to doubt, oh, he has, God has said this before, but I don't know, uh, well, I'm not sure about it, but let me keep on praying. You have actually destroyed the whole thing. Mm -hmm. The thing is so begin to receive, because the angel came, and explain everything, mm -hmm. explain everything, give details, tell him how this boy is going to live and everything. But then he said, how the can this coming out. Yeah, unbelief started coming out from, from, from Zachariah? And he said, how can this, uh, how can this be? Or, mm -hmm. or the, uh, how can I be sure? Mm -hmm. when, that, when they, all that the angel is telling you is just the truth of mm -hmm. God. There okay. is no lies about it. Everything that flows from God is, is truth. Mm -hmm. You know, so when you begin to bring doubt, you are bringing in the enemy. Yeah, I've got to be very, very careful. You have to be very careful mm -hmm. before you are bought your, your miracle. Because yeah. your miracle is just by the corner. God God takes pleasure mm -hmm. in seeing that his children are happy. Mm -hmm. Just like, like like any other father. Like mm -hmm. this Christmas has passed. You bought, you, people bought things for friends. They mm -hmm. bought things for beloved ones. Mm -hmm. They bought things and they gave them. And that's joy. Because you want to please them. Absolutely. That's how God wants to please us too. Mm -hmm. As we begin to please him, mm -hmm. he begins to please us in a big surprise. Yeah. So that is, that, is, that is what actually happened. Mm -hmm. So in verse 19, we see that the angel said to him I am Gabriel as if he didn't know mm. he says I stand in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and mm. to tell you this good news mm. and now you'll be silent and not be able to speak until the day this happens because the angel actually made it very clear you see sometimes when you, when you, when you listen to uh, the question of um, Zachariah, mm. and he compared that of to, that of Mary, mm. you know, which was the same angel Gabriel went to Mary, mm. and Mary had to ask how how would it be? Mm. But in the case of Zacharias, there was unbelief there. Yeah. In the case of Mary, even though the questions were similar, mm. Mary believed. The yeah. question was just to uh, 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 because it, just to make things plain mm. to her, yeah. you know. So the angel made it clear. He said. And now you'll be silent. That's verse 20. Mm. And now you'll be silent and not be able to speak until the day this happens. Because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. So this is so important. We need to be wary of unbelief. Unbelief is not, uh, is not believing anything. No, unbelief is not believing what is said to you. And in relation to God, that really is calling God a liar when mm. you choose not to believe him. Mm. The Bible says that let God be forever, let every man be a liar and God be forever true. Mm. So when you, when you don't believe God, it means that you're calling him a liar. Mm. And that is very, very grave, you know, uh, problem when it comes to Christians. In fact, Jesus said uh, uh, he called an unbelieving heart a yeah. wicked heart of unbelief. Yeah. So we need to be extremely careful. If God says it, because these are covenant promises. And if God says something, he means it. And he has the power and the ability to bring it to come to pass. So that is extremely, you know, important for us to, to, to pay attention to. So we see there, if you go on to verses uh, 21 and 22, we see that when he came out of the, of the temple, you know, he couldn't speak. So the people knew that, you know, yes, that he had seen a vision you know, and uh, he was communicating with signs and so on and so forth. Now, if you read verses 23 to 25, this is where uh, uh, the fulfillment of the promise, the manifestation of the miracle mm. takes place. Remember, we've been looking at these different steps to help us identify, you know, the things we need to, to be aware of, yeah. you know, fear, doubt, and unbelief, beware mm. of those, the things to do in terms of being prayerful, Engaging in the, in the things of God, you know, um, asking so that you might receive mm. and so many other things like that, you know, being, making sure that you, 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 you're living right. So you don't give room for the enemy to be able to rob you because the Bible says that he comes to steal, kill and destroy. Yeah. But Jesus said he came that we might, like, he might, we might have, have life and have it more abundantly. abundantly. And Jesus actually said in one place that the enemy comes, but he finds nothing in me. Because if he finds anything in us, that will be uh, like a, you know, something to hold on to, yeah. you know, to rob us. So yeah. we need to be extremely careful. So we've gone through all these things, then verses 23 uh, to 25. So we read here, it says, When his time of service was completed, he returned home. 
That's talking about Zacharias. Mm. After this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. The Lord has done this for me, she said. In these days, he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. You know, for, Zac for Elizabeth, it was a disgraceful thing in that society mm. to be barren. And, and he, she's saying here, you know, just like the Bible says that when, uh, when God uh, turned our captivity, we were like men who dream. Dream, yeah. Here she's saying that God has done this for me. So she remained in seclusion. I mean, maybe <laughs> hoping that a thing would not abort or whatever. I don't know. But in any case, in these days, he has shown me favor mm. and taken away my disgrace amongst people. And I just believe that, you know, God is ready to remove everything that is, that is a reproach. That's a reproach to us. That's a mm. reproach to our God. Mm. Everything that is challenging you and saying, oh, I thought you said you were a Christian. How come this is happening? How come that is not happening? You know, mm. God is ready to intervene in this season as we press in and, you know, believe him, you know. So yeah. I, I think that's what God really wants to take away from, mm -hmm. from us. Take away the shame that others are saying, oh, you worship your God. See, see, see me. See that person. See how he's enjoying. Mm -hmm. See, see the, see, see how he's uh, got a nice job, got a nice house, got a nice car, got everything mm -hmm. to himself. But you say you are worshiping God. But God hears all these things. Yeah. You know, by your action, you have created uh, an atmosphere for the angelic uh, to come for to to bring the miracles of God to you. Mm -hmm. But also, you still have to be careful also to make sure that that thing that. That, that atmosphere that you have created, you don't really begin to uh, dismantle it by, yes. by the way you, by, the, by, by your action, mm -hmm. you and know, because all your words that comes out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. we, need, we need to be very careful because just as I said earlier, God wants to please his own children. Mm -hmm. God wants to please his own, and his desire is to please us. Mm -hmm. So if he doesn't give those things to us, yeah. eh, who else can God bless? Mm -hmm. Who else can God give those things to? Mm -hmm. You and I are the people that God wants to bless. So that oh, yeah. he's blessing us, we attract others. They say, oh, your God is alive. Yes, he will attract others. Others will see the way you were living before. Mm -hmm. They will see the way you are living before. And then they will see the way you are being blessed now. Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of people will be surprised that, ah, um, Zachariah is old. Mm -hmm. And the wife too. Yeah. Why? Why should they get? Why should? Why should this thing happen? Mm -hmm. When you remember, if you remember, mm -hmm. uh, and Abraham and then. Uh, uh, Abraham and Sarah too, mm. when God intervened in their situation too, yeah. that was the same thing. They were both old. God, God, God brings things that human being doesn't even testify anything about to make it good. Yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. So the, the telephone line should be open now. So if you want to um, uh, get in touch or if you want to send us a message, you know, the mobile number is there, the one that ends with 55. Five. So send us a message as well so we can... Um, take your uh, message if you want. If it's a prayer, if it's a contribution, if it's a question, then mm. just interact. Interact with us. The telephone line should be up pretty soon. Okay. Now, so let's let's go back to um, talking about those that triplet. Mm. You know, the unbelief, fear, unbelief, and uh, and doubt. Yeah. You see, it's not just positioning yourself to receive the miracle. Mm. It's positioning yourself so that once the miracle starts, yes, once the miracle starts, then it is carried on to the end. Mm. It is not aborted. Mm. Okay? Mm. This is absolutely important because doubt, unbelief, and fear, mm. they open the door for the enemy. Yeah. They open the door for That's why the Bible says that we should not be afraid. Talks about fear not, mm. you know, uh, 365 times in, yeah. the, in the Bible. Yeah. And this is like one for each day, really, that mm. you should not be afraid. So it is so important that we pay attention. So not just receiving mm. or uh, initiating the miracle, yeah. but also making sure that we maintain it. Yeah. We keep it. Yeah. We make sure that we don't do anything to abort the, the miracle. The miracle. And, mm. and actually, you see... Uh, what really happened is that, let's say, this year, you have been looking up to God for a particular thing. Mm. 
We need to recheck our life. We need to check our life and say, is there any way that I am contributing towards this? Mm -hmm. You looked around, you are, you are doing what God wants you to do, but inside you, are you doubting? Is there any doubt? Is there any unbelief? This is what Jesus was very, very, very not very pleased with unbelief. He's, he wasn't pleased at all with it. Because he said, all that the Father wanted to do to people, people have used unbelief to, to stop it. Mm -hmm. And he said, because of your unbelief, mm -hmm. because of your unbelief, you remember the lady with the issue of blood mm -hmm. in the Bible. The lady, the, the lady with the issue of blood. When he went, Jesus looked back and said, when, when, when he says, someone has touched me, the disciples said, no, there are a lot of people here, no one has touched you. But Jesus realized that power has left him. The woman kept pressing on and he touched until he touched the hem of his garment. And when he touched that one, when he touched that, the woman was healed. And Jesus knew, Jesus told my, my, my daughter, your faith has made you whole. Mm -hmm. That is one thing we need to do mm -hmm. to, to maintain, to maintain our uh, 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 atmosphere of miracle around us, mm -hmm. you know, that faith because when you have that faith, that faith yeah. will propel you to action. Yes, you know, when you have faith, it will propel you to action mm -hmm. because faith without work is dead, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. So that faith will propel you to action, and that action will begin to bring manifest things that you will see. Mm -hmm. You know, God, I want to tell you, even as you are, you are entering this year, even as you are entering this year, just expect. Miracles from God. Expect great miracles from God. Yes. Just keep doing what you are doing. Keep pressing on the things of God. Don't be discouraged. Mm -hmm. Don't be dismayed. Mm -hmm. You know, meditate on the word of God mm -hmm. and keep pressing, pressing on the things that you are doing. And you will see that the Lord God will bless you. And, 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 and then you will see that he has put word in your mouth mm -hmm. that you can speak. And those people who have been looking forward, they say, oh, he's been worshiping God for years, that nothing has happened to his life. They will suddenly begin to see. And what is going to happen in your life is the thing that people will testify that this God mm. is great. Mm. Outside that we testify. Mm. People will tell, because they've seen your former life. And they've seen now that, you, that you're being with Lord. And they will say, this cannot happen mm. except by the God of of grace. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Amen. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So this is so important in the sense that, you know, Jesus was, when he was talking about, uh, when he said, this kind goeth not out but by fasting and praying. Mm. Natural unbelief is the most difficult to get rid of, you know, and unbelief is not something, you know, most times we, we concentrate on building up our faith. Mm. Okay. Faith is a manifestation of belief. Yeah. All right. But unbelief, uh, it does more damage. Mm. So we focus on building up our faith, mm. and then we ignore the unbelief side. Remember yeah. that guy, the one that the 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 son had an epileptic child, yeah. and they brought the child to Jesus, and Jesus and uh, uh, the the man, Jesus said to him that he said to the man, "Oh, I brought my child to your disciples, and they could not deliver him. Mm. If you can." What does if represent? If shows doubt. Yeah. If qualifies something. If that means that you may not be able to. There's mm. a, there's doubt there. Yeah. There's doubt. There's unbelief. Mm. I said if you can, then Jesus said to him, "Listen, it's not a question of if you can. It's if you can believe." As mm. far as Jesus was concerned, the power was there yeah. to be able to do the, the job. Mm. You know, it was the it was the man's unbelief that had to be dealt with. It had mm. to be treated. Mm. So that's why. You know, Jesus said to him that if you can, all things are possible, possible. to him that yeah. believes. Mm. You know, so unbelief puts you out of the realm of possibility. Mm. And this is why we need to be very careful. You know, and how can you change an unbelieving situation? Well, you feed on the word of God. Yeah. The more you feed on the word of God, the more you spend time with God, the more it's a question of trust. You know, yeah, yeah. it's a question of trust because if you trust somebody, if you know that God cannot lie, right? If you know that He has the okay, hello, caller. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the show. Hello. Hello. Yes. It is Jesus. You know the live program. Mm hmm. I like to. Can you lower your, Hello. your, yes, we are hearing you, but it's a lot of background noise, so. Hello. Yeah. I yeah. think you should. Okay. 
<laughs> and suck on my willy. Yes. <laughs> suck on my willy. Yes, we can hear you. Can you? What, what, what do you want us to do for you? I want to say suck my willy. My big, fat, hairy willy. Please suck it big. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> we pray that the Lord will touch your life and uh, change you and uh, redeem your life in Jesus' name. Amen. So what we're saying, Jesus said that unbelief is a dangerous thing. Mm. Okay. So if you, if if we, if we um, work on building our faith yeah. without remo removing unbelief then it's going to be counterproductive, right? Yeah. Okay. That's what Jesus was saying. And he said that, look, this type of unbelief, it goes not but by prayer and oh, fasting. fasting. So you need to get the word of God on the inside of you. Mm. And sometimes there may be need for you to actively pray and fast mm. to be able to get it out of your system. Yeah. The reason why the word of God is so important is because it's the word of God. It, come, it came out of, out of God. Mm -hmm. And God is still speaking today mm -hmm. to his people. If you look, if you look at when, when it was time for Joshua, for Moses to hand over to Joshua, during that, God actually did the handing over and God said, meditate on this word day and night. Yes, your pastor may speak to you, but you have a place too. You have a place to meditate on the word of God day and night because it said there that you in there you will have good success. So there are successes that are not good, but when you meditate on the word of God, you will have good success. And that is what we are talking about here. When you begin to meditate on the word of God, anything that comes to your mind, discard it. Say, no, this is not the word of God. I want to meditate on the Lord of God because I believe. God, whatever comes out of the mouth of God is the truth. And I believe in it and we meditate on it, meditate on it, and it will come to pass. Because Joshua was to lead his people. And the only way Joshua can do it is to lead the people by meditating on the word of God. The full of faith. Full of faith. Mm -hmm. Full of faith. Mm -hmm. Full of action. Because it's not only to go. You know, when, he, when it's time to go for war, he knows that he has that faith. Yeah. And he knows he has to go. And that, that is the thing. So to this, this, this year, even as we move into next year, mm -hmm. just be prepared. Mm -hmm. Be prepared. Meditate on the word. You are only just to meditate on the word of God. And ask God his, his purpose concerning your life. If you have not known God's purpose concerning your life, mm -hmm. ask him about his purpose concerning your life. Once you get his purpose concerning your life mm -hmm. and you run with it, mm -hmm. I tell you, my brothers and my sisters, mm -hmm. it's going to be great. Mm -hmm. Even as we enter this 2022, mm -hmm. it's going to be great with you. Mm -hmm. And I, we are praying also mm -hmm. that the Lord will make it great for you. Mm -hmm. Because once you are blessed, you will be a blessing to others. Absolutely. And you will attract a lot of people into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. That is the that is the aim. Mm -hmm. Aim at bless, uh, pleasing God. Absolutely. Aim at pleasing God. Mm -hmm. Because faith pleases God. Mm -hmm. And when you take action, that's, that's faith and work. Mm -hmm. They go together. Absolutely. In fact, you know, talking about, you know, faith, the first level of exercising faith, really, is when we come to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible talks about how, you know, um, nobody can come to Jesus except the Father draws them. Mm. Okay. The Bible also talks about how somebody cannot believe without hearing the message. Mm. So we see right there that the, 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 the absolute, um, the cure for unbelief mm. is the message, to mm. keep hearing the message, keep hearing the message. And Jesus said, he said in the, in the, in the scriptures that, they cannot, somebody cannot believe unless they hear the word of God. Mm. And somebody cannot hear unless, you know, somebody preaches to them. Mm. And that's what we're doing here. Like that caller just now, they need the gospel. They need to open their hearts to hear what God is saying because God is, this is a season of salvation. You know, the greatest miracle that we can think of is that of salvation. That of being saved, your soul being saved, mm. and you're in, you know, whatever happens, you are on your way to heaven. Mm. And this is one of the main purposes for us being here, yes. that you may hear the good news, the fact that God loves you, that God wants you to live your life of sin and to come and be saved. Jesus paid the price because there is a, there's a, a repercussion for living a life of sin. There's a repercussion for living, you know, uh, uh, I mean, for choosing to live 
not the way that God wants, but outside of God's way. Mm. There's a repercussion for it. You cannot uh, uh, discard God here on earth and expect that when you die, you go and stay in his heaven. That's a, that's a lie. It doesn't work that way. You need to know him here. And God has made a way for you to do that. And all he needs for you to do is to humble yourself and to receive what Jesus has done on the cross. Mm. You know, Jesus went to the cross to die for our sins. Every dirty, you know, stinky sin that you've ever committed, Jesus paid the price. The Bible says that he hung on the tree. All our sins were put upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. Mm. So th that same Jesus is what, who we're presenting to you today. Yeah. That same Jesus is the miracle-working Jesus, and the greatest miracle is the miracle of salvation. So if you don't know Jesus, and you've been li listening to, to uh, today's um, uh, broadcast, if you don't know Jesus, today is the day of salvation because tomorrow might be too late. Mm. You may think you have tomorrow in your pocket, but nobody does. Mm. Tomorrow might be too late. We know people who are here one day, the next day they're gone. I'm not, it's, it's not a case of trying to frighten you into the kingdom of God. No, it's your choice. You've mm. got to make up your mind. God is offering you through us on this broadcast eternal life that mm. you can have eternal life. If you choose Jesus, mm -hmm. if you turn your back on your, your wayward ways and turn to Jesus, Jesus will save your soul. He will give you a brand new slate to start with. So if you are there and you want to do that, I want you to pray with us. It's a very simple prayer, but just make sure you mean it from the bottom of your heart. Yes. Say, Lord Jesus. I want to repeat so that they can follow. Yeah. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I come to you today. I come to you today. Thank you that you love me so much. Thank you that you love me so much. That you went to the cross for me. That you went to the cross for me. You paid the price for my sins. You paid the price for my sins. You took my sicknesses and my diseases. You took my sicknesses and my diseases. Upon yourself. Upon yourself. You became a curse for me. You became a curse for me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I repent of my sins. I repent of my sins. I make you the Lord of my life. I make you the Lord of my life. From this day forward. From this day forward. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And help me to live for you. And help me to live for you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So if you Amen. pray that prayer, I want to encourage you because... That's all Jesus said. If you believe in your heart that Jesus died and rose from the dead and you confess with your mouth, the Bible says that you will be saved. Mm. That's all the Bible says, that you will be saved. Now, if you've done that, I want you to contact us because we have some materials to help, to help you with. You know, we've got this one here. It's a CD. You can have it in digital form or a, a physical CD. It talks about growing in grace. It tells you what happened when you prayed that prayer, that simple prayer. It is a life-transforming prayer. So I want you to contact us either by email or whatever way, and we'll send you a copy of this or a link to be able to uh, download it or listen to it. Then I also want to encourage you, if you've done that, to find a Bible-believing church where they will teach you the Word of God. Yeah. Tell somebody about what's happened to you. Get mm. yourself a Bible and talk to God regularly. And in uh, the la next few moments, we're going to pray for anybody who has sickness in their bodies. If you want yeah. to pray for that. Yeah. Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters and anyone who is listening. Father, we pray that whatsoever sickness that they have, Lord, we just pray that you will touch them right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, because you are great. Once you touch, the sickness will disappear. Yes. I believe, almighty God, mm -hmm. that you are stretching out your hand to touch so many. Yes. So many. Yes. So many right now. now. And Father, let them have the power. Let them be delivered completely in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Father God, I just pray for somebody who has issues with their skin even right now. In Jesus' name, we rebuke that skin condition that has flared up. We command it to clear up right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And somebody that has a problem with their right ear as well. Mm -hmm. It is ringing. There's a lot of noise in that right ear. We command it to 
cease right now in the name of Jesus. We Amen. speak to your balance center. We command it to be made whole. We command it to, to work properly and perfectly in the mighty name of Jesus. And we command that person who is worried, worried about their son, mm. that they are in trouble. We say, trust the Lord, trust the Lord, and he will make it good. Mm. He will turn his life around. So we are just about rounding up now. And I uh, want to thank you for joining us. And if you want to be in touch with us, do contact us and, uh, you know, whatever materials we have, we'll let you have them. It will be a great blessing to you. It will be a great blessing to you. So from so, me, happy day me. And from me, Prince Will. Thank you and God thank bless you. God you. bless you. Until next time. Thank you so much for joining me on today's episode of Summit Life. I hope it was a great blessing to you. If you made a commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ during this episode or are interested to hear more about our Lord and Savior, then please contact us and we can send you some material to help you understand better and to grow in your walk with the Lord. We also want to invite you to connect with us on our various social media platforms. Look for us on YouTube where we have various videos that are both inspiring and informative and of course subscribe so you never miss an episode the bible says there's a reward for those who are wise who win many to the lord and jesus says blessed are the feet of those who proclaim the good news so do consider partnering with us in our ministry and share in the blessing that is sure to come as this incredible gospel message is spread throughout the world as a partner you will receive regular updates materials and messages from us you would automatically be added to our prayer list and prayed for by our team of prayer warriors every day and if led by the lord support us financially thank you again for joining me and i look forward to seeing you during the next episode of summit life <music>